Hello and welcome to the Horizon Technology webcast on the determination of monocrotophos, diazonon, malathion, EPN, and methamdophos from aqueous samples using Atlantic HLB solid phase extraction disks. Hello, I'm Jim Fenster and I am an application chemist at Horizon Technology. I'm responsible for global uh, technical application support and I'll be pleased to talk to you this afternoon about this exciting application. Methamidophos, monocrotophos, diazonon, malathion, and EPN are commonly used pesticides in the control of insects and aquatic pests in many areas of agriculture throughout the world. In particular, these organophosphate pesticides are used to control rice production and agricultural production and fish aqu ag aquaculture in parts of the world. Methamidophos, in particular, is used in great quantities in rice fields in China where rice fish culture is very common and many other rice producing countries such as Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Given their prevalent use throughout Asia, residues of these organophosphate pesticides show up in many food sources in, um, mon in commonly mon many food sources and are commonly monitored in wastewater and drinking water in these regions. This next slide is a very nice representation of a typical rice agricultural field uh, courtesy of natural, National Geographic. Methamidophos and monocrotophos has been either restricted or withdrawn from use due to its dangerous toxic side effects. Having said this, these are still used in limited applications in Malaysia for trunk injections in trees. Diazonon is still widely used worldwide for control of insects in soil and on ornamental plants and vegetables. Canada has recently set a maximum level in drinking water of 20 micrograms per liter or 20 parts per billion. Malathion is commonly used to control a variety of outdoor insects in ag and re residential settings. It is registered for use on food, feed, and ornamental crops and in the control of mosquitoes, boll weevils, and fruit flies. It is also, incidentally, an active ingredient in shampoos used to treat and control head lice in humans. The goals of any valid analytical method is to representatively sample the matrix, whether it's food, water, or soil, followed by sample preparation to isolate and or concentrate analytes of interest. Analytical levels are determined by GC mass spec or HPLC mass spec. The goals of any successful analytical method is to achieve the highest possible recoveries of compounds of interest while maintaining an efficient cleanup method. The analyst must keep in mind the limits of his analytical instrumentation as well as the required minimum levels of detection, MDLs, as well as the limit of detection of the analytical methodology. Also, careful consideration of costs and resources of the analytical lab play a role in deciding the best methods for extraction and analysis. The goal of this project was to create a method for the extraction of all five compounds, methamidophos, monocrotophos, diazonon, malathion, and EPN. Existing methodologies all consisted of a separate extraction step for the methamidophos, which added additional time to the organic extraction procedure. Methamidophos is problematic due to its extreme hydrophilic nature and its tendency to want to stay in the water phase. Literature suggested many liquid-liquid extraction methods that use salt to force the metamidophos into the organic phase. 
So our approach involved using salt to force the compound out of water and stick it to the solid phase sorbent on our extraction disks. This problem of extraction was evaluated and solutions were explored in developing this method. Extractions were carried out using the Horizon Speedx 4790 configured with a carbon cartridge to scavenge any compounds that do not stick to the disc. Drying and concentration of extracts were carried out on the Horizon DriveApp drying and concentration system. Analytical determinations were made using a 6890GC from Agilent and a 5973 mass detector also from Agilent. The Horizon SpeedX 4790 extractor has the unique ability to process large volumes of water quickly and efficiently so that extracts ready for drying and concentration are obtained quickly. Atlantic HLB disks were used as our, H as our solid phase extraction sorbent mainly because of the broad range of polarities of the compounds we wanted to extract. Extracts were collected by separately eluding the HLB disks and the carbon cartridges. After concentration, extracts were separately injected onto a GC mass spec and levels recorded. As mentioned, the Horizon DriveApp concentrator was used for this work to dry and concentrate the samples. Its unique ability to dry samples online without the use of sodium sulfate minimize, minimizes losses associated with drying and concentration and maximizes our recoveries of compounds of interest. Often, the use of sodium sulfate to dry samples of residual water will adversely affect recoveries of compounds of interest. The dry vap uses a dry disk to remove residual water from the extracts by a hydrophobic membrane that allows solvent to pass through the membrane but not water. Summary of the method is listed in this slide and is detailed here. All samples were adjusted to pH 2 with uh, 1 mL of concentrated HCl and then 100 grams of salt NACL were added to the sample containers. As mentioned, carbon cartridges were used to trap effluent coming off the extraction disk prior to its going to waste in order to scavenge any compounds that break through the HLB disk. After samples were dried and concentrated, an optional liquid-liquid extraction was carried out on the residual water fractions using DCM water in a 3 to 1 ratio. To easier visualize the extraction of these compounds, a schematic representation of the SpeedX extract 4790 extractor is shown here. The two extracts, once collected, were analyzed separately by GC mass spec in order to determine if any breakthrough of the HLB was observed. The SpeedX extractor is an automated extraction process controlled by the Envision controller. The analytical extraction method is shown on this slide. As, is, as you can see in this slide, um, there were four pre-wet steps and five rinsing steps. Pre-wets are basically conditioning steps used to prepare the disk for extraction of your compounds of interest, and rinsing steps are basically extraction and collection steps used to collect your extracts. In this particular case, the HLB disc was conditioned with methylene chloride, acetone, and then two steps of reagent water or distilled water. After the sample processes through the disc, the discs are dried for 30 seconds, and then extracts are collected first acetone, then followed by four 
extracts of methylene chloride. What is unique about the 4790 is that the original sample bottle is used for the extraction and the rinses actually rinse the sample bottle and then are used to extract the disc. Shown here is a separate elution method to elute the carbon cartridge. You'll notice in this slide that we used 10 rinse steps following a, an initial air dry time of 5 minutes to dry the cartridge, the carbon cartridge of any residual water. The first two rinses are acetone, which is a water miscible solvent, which is used to rinse the original sample bottle and get rid of any residual water followed by eight rinses of methylene chloride, which then would elute off any of the organophosphate pesticides that are present either in the original sample bottle or retained on the carbon cartridge. The drying and concentration parameters for the horizon dry vap are listed in this slide. The drying and concentration of samples took approximately 40 minutes to complete six samples. All samples were concentrated down to an endpoint of one mil and then transferred to a GC valve. Starting volumes of all samples ranged from 40 mils for the HLB disc extracts to 150 mils for the carbon cartridge extracts. GC mass spec parameters are listed in this slide for the Agilent analytical instrumentation. To isolate where analytes may be lost, a recovery study without water was performed using the drying and evaporation step on the dry vap. Solvents were spiked with 30 micrograms each of compounds and these were dried and concentrated in order to determine the losses associated with drying and concentration. These recoveries proved to be very high with very little losses associated with this step. Analytical recoveries were between 89 and 106 percent with CVs ranging between 6.2 and 8.5 percent. By doing this step we were able to eliminate any source of losses of analyte recovery due to the drying or the concentration step. This slide shows recovery data from clean aqueous samples that were spiked at 10 micrograms per liter and extracted using 47 millimeter HLB H discs and then analyzed separately. Disc extraction results were analyzed and very good recoveries were achieved for monocrotophos, diazonon, malathion, and EPN, all of which had excellent recoveries of 73% to 91%. However, due to the extreme hydrophilic nature of the methamidophos, recoveries were very low, even with high salt content of the samples. They averaged around 5% recovery uh, with most of the met methamidophos breaking through the HLB disc and going out with the wastewater stream. Recovery data for the carbon cartridges are shown on this slide. The carbon cartridge extract showed that most of the methamidophos was absorbed on the carbon cartridge and did in fact break through the HLB disc. Average recoveries were about 52% on the carbon scavenger column and this proved that the carbon cartridge was indeed necessary in the system configuration to optimize the uh, extraction of metamidophos. Total metamidophos from HLB discs and carbon fractions were shown here in this slide. Again with samples spiked at 10 micrograms per liter. Recoveries range from 56% for metamidophos to 98% for micro, for mono 
protofoss with excellent precision of 4.2% to 6.5%. Due to the extreme hydrophilic nature of the metamidophos, it will repartition back into the residual water from the sample extracts. If highest possible recoveries are needed, then a separate liquid-liquid extraction of this residual water is recommended. Data shown in this table indicate excellent recoveries of the methamidophos as well as all the other compounds after this final salting and re-extraction procedure of the water. This table specifically shows individual recoveries from the HLB, HDIS, the carbon cartridge, and the liquid-liquid post-extraction procedure to give the total extraction of all compounds. Required level of detection for this assay was 10 micrograms per liter or 10 parts per billion. So samples were spiked at this level and then extracted. Data shown here shows very high recoveries and good precision at this level of detection. In conclusion, this work shows that a single pass solid phase extraction method has been evaluated for all five organophosphate pesticides. The addition of salt and use of a carbon cartridge help to retain the more polar analytes. Spike recoveries and precision for replicate preparation show excellent results. In particular, hydrophilic analytes such as methamidophos can show improved recovery if residual water after drying is re-extracted. This method development demonstrates a semi-automated procedure to speed sample preparation with excellent precision and these results indicate that this method or this methodology can be used to improve recovery of other very hydrophilic analytes from water. I have a question. I saw earlier in your diagram that you're measuring the two extracts separately, the one from the carbon cartridge and the one from your disc. That seems inefficient to me. Why would you do that? Uh, that's correct. Um, we did, for the purpose of this study, analyze and treat them separately as fr separate fractions. We did that for a reason. We dried and concentrated them and tracked them separately just to keep track of where the methamidophos was going. In reality, once we know that most of the compound is trapped on the carbon cartridge, once a final method is made, you can combine those two fractions and dry and concentrate them and analyze them together. Thank you. The second question I have is, I have never heard of HLB discs. Could you tell me a little bit more about them, please? Sure. Uh, HLB stands for hydrophilic lipophilic bonded phase and it's a, it's a uh, solid phase sorbent that we use on our solid phase extraction discs, our Atlantic discs. And basically uh, it's a sorbent that's designed for a very wide range of, an of chemical properties of the analytes that you're interested in. So if you're looking at a set of compounds that have a lot of acid properties to it, a lot of basic properties, or a lot of extreme polarities to it, to the mix of the compounds, this is a very good sorbent phase to be using for your compounds. In this particular case with these various organophosphate pesticides, they range a lot in polarity and they also range quite a bit in their hydrophilic, hydrophobic nature. So we chose this as our sorbent to use. Thank you.